Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And hopefully it goes to your account and not mine. Yes. I think it should just go to the Zach. Is that correct, Vanya? Yes. All right. We're all good. Okay. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. And I'm very happy to virtually be here. Um, so I'm going to talk today um, mostly about some vanishing theorems and characteristic zero, then in characteristic P and mixed characteristic. And I want to sort of show how these vanishing theorems, you know, can be used at the same time, and then show how these vanishing theorems can be used in mixed characteristic to generalize a number of existing results. So from sort of higher dimensional birational algebraic geometry to um, schemes over things like the integers or ZP. Um, okay, so I'm just going to start with Kodaira or maybe kalamata fifek vanishing theorem. And so say, let's say we have a non-singular d-dimensional projective variety over a field of characteristic zero, L is ample or maybe big and NAF or big and semi-ample line bundle. And so then sort of maybe one, one of the classical statements of this kind of vanishing is that the um, everything except the top cohomology of L inverse, so right here, um, uh, all that cohomology vanishes, or I could take the Serre dual and all the cohomology bigger than zero vanishes as well. And so <clears throat> you might ask, well, why is this useful? And so that's what I'm just gonna start with. Um, so the reason this is useful is because we can, and I'll explain this a little bit more precisely, we can lift sections. So what do I mean by that? Let's say D inside X is a Cartier divisor. And it's not singular, so every divisor is Cartier. Let's say it's Cartier, let's say it's prime divisor. Um, <clears throat> and then we have the adjunction sequence from zero to omega X to omega X twisted by D to omega d to zero. Well, this is basically a chiefy way to write kx plus d restricted to d is kd. And I'm gonna twist by L. Maybe L again is some kind of ample or big and semi-ample or big and naf line bundle. And take cohomology. And what you get, of course, then is h0x omega x d twisted by L, this maps to H0x omega D twisted by L. And then the next thing you would have in your long exact sequence would be H1x omega X tensor L. But the one thing we were just told by Kodaira or Kalmata Fifek vanishing is that this is zero. And so this map right here, I need to like hide this bar somehow. This is getting in my way. Um, So, so I'm fighting with my computer right now. Um, <clears throat> and so this map right here, this green map is surjective. And so in particular, let's say for some reason I knew I had a section here, maybe that was non-zero at some point, it has a pre-image the S prime mapping to S, which is also non-zero at that, at that same point. And so um, S has a pre-image of the S prime. And so this tells me that, well, maybe for dimension reasons or because, you know, D is lower dimensional, I know for some reason there's a section that doesn't vanish at some point, there's, then there's some section in this higher dimensional thing that doesn't vanish at the same point too. Um, okay, so that's great. And let me show you um, just you know a quick theorem of how to use this in practice. So let's say you have a point on a non-singular d-dimensional projective variety, L is ample. You blow up x at e. Oh, sorry, you blow you blow up x at little x, right here, and you're going to get you know e is going to be the exceptional divisor. And so then we can define what's called the Sesshadri constant of L at x. And we're going to define it to be this number epsilon XL right here. Okay, so remember, um, you know, say from Hartshorn, if I did pi upper star n times pi upper star L minus E here, for n big enough, Hartshorn, you know, chapter two, section seven, I think, maybe will tell me that this is, um, this is ample on, on X, or sorry, on, on Y. And so if I divide through by n, 
I'd get one over n here, the n's would cancel. And what I'd see is that pi upper star L minus one over n e is ample. So for n big, I could put a little, you know, t maybe, that's some kind of rational or real number. And I can ask when is this different sample? So for t small enough, this is ample. Um, <clears throat> and so the question is how, how big can you make it before it stops being ample? And that's some kind of local measure of the positivity of L at X. And that's called the Sashadri constant. Okay, and so here's a theorem with X as above. Um, suppose that the Sashadri constant is bigger than D. Remember D is the dimension. Then omega X twisted by L, this adjoint line bundle is globally generated at X. And so I'd like to really quickly prove that. Um, <clears throat> okay. And we'll use this sort of as a, you know, just to see how we can use this sort of notion of lifting sections in practice. Okay, so a couple quick comments. E, I'm blowing up a, a point, a closed point on a smooth variety. E is going to be projective space of dimension d minus one. Okay, that's my exceptional divisor. Um, <clears throat> and I'm trying to prove that like there's a section in H zero omega x. Um, twisted by L, I want, I want some kind of S there, non-zero, non-vanishing at X. Okay. So I need some kind of section that doesn't vanish at X. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna instead work upstairs. So we're going to blow up, I'm gonna blow up, we're gonna get Y to X, just like in the definition there. Um, <clears throat> And we're going to say, okay, well, if I can find a section in Y, um, how about pull back omega Y twisted by L, I can find a section here, um, non-zero at the, you know, non-zero on E, then S will give me a section downstairs as well. So then I can also view S as a section in here, non-zero on X. So remember, E is just the blow up of X. Or blow up uh, non-zero at little X, right? Okay, so how are we gonna do that? Well, we're just gonna write down that same adjunction sequence I just wrote up um, on the previous slide, or, or the pre um, just slightly above. So I'm, remember, why is the blow up of X at little x? I can write down my adjunction sequence. Um, omega E to zero. I'm gonna twist by pi upper star L minus D times E. And now remember, we assumed that the Sashadri constant was bigger than D. And so that's actually gonna force this thing to be ample, okay? Because the Sashadri constant is sort of the biggest number I can put and, you know, or it's the sum of the numbers I can put such that this thing is ample. So I can twist by this and that's ample. And I wanna make two quick observations. Oops, I stopped sharing, shoot. Okay. I need to put this somewhere where it's not gonna get in my way. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Is there a way to minimize this thing while I'm sharing? Probably not. Okay, so I'm gonna twist by this thing and I wanna make two quick observations. Omega Y, pi upper star L minus DE, Okay, this thing, and I will leave this as an exercise to all of you, is just the pullback of omega x twisted by L. But the point is, you know, we know what the relative canonical for a blow up of a smooth point is. So I'm just using that. So if you get bored in the talk or, you know, completely lose track of what I'm saying, you can go verify this little factoid here. Okay, and likewise, omega e twisted by the same thing or twisted by, actually, omega E. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, did I? Yeah. Twisted by D minus money. Why am I getting confused here? Okay, well, anyways, I claim this is OE, which is OPN. If I set it up right, this is the relevant thing. This should probably be a D minus one. That must be. Okay, something is wrong in my setup. I must have copied my notes wrong. But if I twist by the appropriate thing, I'm going to get this one and that one. That's sort of the point. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to get is just as above, pi upper star omega x tensored by L. This thing is going to surject onto H0 Y O E. And yeah, I guess I do want to twist by the thing that's ample. So, so this one should be D minus one, probably E, and this one should be D minus one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Because remember, I'm starting with this sequence here. I twist by this, I'm going to have like a D minus one on that one. So these two coincide. And then I'm going to map to zero again because of our Kodaira vanishing. Because that's going to be the H1, just like what I wrote above. OK. And so now the point is, I know what the global sections of the structure sheaf on projective space are. That's just a copy of K. Okay, And I also know. Um, so that means there exists a section here, say mapping to one. And that's going to be a section which is non-vanishing on E. And hence, when I push it down to before I blew up, I am going to have a section downstairs that doesn't vanish on E as well. So I somehow got my science or my numbers wrong on this thing. So I screwed up all my computations. Okay. But anyways, the point is, this is a, just a direct consequence, if you don't screw up your numbers like I just did, of Kodaira vanishing and the lifting of sections argument we just had. So any questions on this before I go on? OK. So what about positive or mixed characteristic? What about singular varieties in characteristic 0? Um, Kodaira or Kalamata Fifek vanishing as stated is false in characteristic zero for singular varieties, unless the singularities are mild. Rational singularities or log terminal singularities are fine. Kodaira vanishing doesn't hold in positive characteristic. And maybe it's not a shock then, that's due to uh, Renault. Um, the relative version of Kodaira vanishing or Kalamata Fifek vanishing doesn't hold in mixed characteristic, i.e. for like schemes over ZP. Um, and so that uh, Totaro pointed this out um, to us, but others, I, I, maybe others have observed this before, I'm not sure. Okay, so I want to motivate what's going to come just by thinking about what happens for singular varieties in characteristic zero. Okay, so let's say, let's say X is in characteristic zero. It's a variety, not smooth, but we can take a resolution. resolution of x, maybe I'll call it pi x, maybe I'll call it y to x, just to mimic what was sort of going on from the blowups before. Um, let's say d is an x, is some kind of prime divisor. I can also arrange things such as d tilde with a strict transform. Of d is also non-singular. You know, I could take a log resolution. There's lots of variants of this. I can make lots of things smooth or simple normal crossing if I'd like. Okay, so we don't necessarily have H zero X omega X twisted by D to L to H zero X omega D twisted by L this may not surject, even if everything inside is Cohen Macaulay, so we don't have to worry about questions of what do I mean by canonical modules or anything like that. Um, this may not surject. OK? 
Okay. But I do know that H zero Y, Y is non-singular, D tilde, twisted by the pullback of L. Notice that because L was big in F or big in semi-ample, um, so is its pullback. And so we do have vanishing. For that one, so that means this map is surjective right here. So that goes to zero and that map is rejected. Now, I want to make uh, point out something really um, pretty straightforward here, or, or um, I don't want to annotate. Okay, so if I pick, um, I just want to point out here, I'm just going to stick it here. Whoops, that is too wide. So if I pick out, uh, if I push forward um, the, higher, the higher direct images of omega, say maybe D tilde, at least if I made that a resolution, these are all going to be zero. This is Grauer Riemann Schneider. So this is a relative version of Kodaira or Kalamata feedback vanishing anyways. And maybe I shouldn't be all sparkly. Um, and that you also get the same kind of thing for R pi, pi lower star, omega x tilde, or omega y. This equals zero for all i bigger than zero. And you also get, you know, um, the higher direct images. This just comes from the short exact sequence now of d tilde. This equals zero for all i bigger than zero. Actually, maybe I'll move these down out of the way. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can see what you're writing at the moment. Oh, no. But maybe not... bring it up a little bit. Oh, my sh screen sharing paused. OK. Resume share. So, ah, yeah. OK. So what I'm telling you is that the higher direct images of omega d tilde, of omega y, and omega y d tilde are all going to be 0. And so that's going to tell us, actually, that um, <clears throat> I actually have maps from here to here. And you know these maps are actually just going to be inclusions. Okay. And so even though, um, even though this thing may not surject, this bottom row need not surject, right there, that might not surject. I have certain sub, you know, sublinear systems in those two adjoint, you know, global sections of those adjoint line bundles where the sublinear system is surjective because they come from a resolution where could I revenge and still holds. Okay. Hopefully this makes sense. Okay. And <clears throat> this is, you know. I mean, you know, these images are like global sections of things that are called, you know, multiplier ideals or under appropriate hypotheses. They're basically global sections of multiplier ideals. And so the vanishing you get there is sometimes also called natal vanishing. And so I'm just doing this all in one step here. Before I continue on, I want to point out that, you know, you might ask, well, how far? I have these, you know, special sections maybe, and these embed into H naught X omega D tensor L. Are they everything? Sometimes, sometimes surjective, sometimes not. It is surjective, or it is an isomorphism if D has rational singularities, for example. And likewise, you can ask the same thing for this map up here. Um, that's going to be sort of surjective when, you know, under hypotheses like the pair XD is PLT, if you've heard of those things. So, you know, under some reasonable hypotheses, we're going to get some kind of surjection between the global sections, at least of some like special linear systems, special linear systems in these global sections here. So maybe we can't lift all sections, but maybe that's good enough. Maybe we can still find the sections that we want, like maybe up here, for example. But you know, maybe you can still do the same kind of argument. And sometimes that's the case. Okay. All right. So what about positive characteristic? Well, 
I there's some problems. There's no resolution of singularities. And even if I did, as I said before, there's no Kodaira vanishing, you know, and no vanishing theorems. But there is a different trick you can use. So in the above argument, I basically use, well, I have Kodaira vanishing on something that maps to X, at least for the pullback of L, or I have some vanishing on something that maps to X. And so what you can do in characteristic P instead is I can, um, well, maybe I can find, how about, some y to x, maybe I'll call it pi again, where maybe I, I, I almost certainly want this to be surjective, proper, something along those lines. And maybe I want that, um, maybe the higher direct images of y, or, or sorry, maybe a omega y twisted by the pullback of L. Uh, maybe I want this to be zero. That seems to be the kind of trick we just use for multiplier ideals and resolution of singularities in characteristic zero. So maybe we can do the same thing in characteristic P. Can I find some kind of Y to X that satisfies this property? And it turns out the answer is yes. And there's a special thing about characteristic P. We're going to let Y equal X and we're going to let pi maybe be the Frobenius. So yes, we can do this. We're going to let this to be the Frobenius or maybe the E iterated if you want absolute Frobenius. And so the point here is Fe upper star or, um, of L, well, that's pi upper star of L because my pi is that, this is just L to the P to the E. When I pull back a line bundle by Frobenius, I raise it to the pth power. And you can see this because when I pull back anything, I'm just, you know, um, pull back any line bundle under any map, I'm just sort of taking the transition functions and extending them to my Y. And here, functions gets raised to the pth power when I pull back by Frobenius. So my line bundle, the transition functions get raised to the pth power. So L gets turned into, um, pull back of L is, L to the P to the E. And now, Sayre vanishing. Don't even have to use anything, you know, like Kodaira vanishing. Sayre vanishing already implies that HI X, Omega X, just by the pullback, or F, L P to the E, that this is zero for all E sufficiently large. So I already have vanishing in characteristic P. I just, maybe I shouldn't use resolutions. Maybe I should use Frobenius instead. It's maybe one thing you could try. And it turns out this has been actually a pretty successful approach for a number of years. And let me just give you an idea of how you can do this. Um, <clears throat> so let me just first point out the dual to OX to FE lower star OX. And these are varieties, so integral schemes over a field. They have canonical modules or dualizing complexes. So we're going to get um, <clears throat> some kind of dual map from the canonical module on X back to, or from the push forward of the canonical module on X back to the canonical module on X. This is just like, look, this is duality for a finite morphism. That's all I'm doing here. Grotendieck duality for a finite morphism. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a big diagram. And I'm going to, let me just explain this very briefly. It's going to help motivate what happens in characteristic P. So this is just kind of like the sequence we wrote on Y upstairs. And of course, this one maps to omega D. This one maps to omega X. I might have omega x twisted by d here. And, you know, the most natural thing you might want to put is fe lower star and then pullback of d. We already said pullback of d is basically p to the e d. So I have this right here. But because d is an effective divisor, I actually get an inclusion right there. Okay. So, um, this is sort of dual to like this inclusion right here 
be able to put in a different color. Maybe not that color. This is sort of somehow dual to OX minus D mapping to FE lower star, OX minus D. FE lower star is just like push forward, but it's Frobenius. So Frobenius is a bijection on my set, so it doesn't do anything to the points, but it just changes the module structure. Any questions at this point? Have I put everyone to sleep? Okay, but this really is very much like the diagram we did before. And actually something similar kind of happened um, when in characteristic zero, we took the strict transform of D on the resolution because you might have non more than one component. You know, the pullback of D might not be reduced. Likewise, we're pulling back D here in this middle arrow right here. I'm pulling back D, but I want to take the reduced part of D because I want maps between my exact sequences to all go through. Okay. And so what do you get out of this? Well, if you do something slightly like this, um, I'm going to take global sections of everything. And what I'm going to get is I'm going to get the following. So I'm going to get H naught, X, Fe lower star, omega X twisted by D, tensor L to the P to the E. L is just my ample line bundle. This thing maps to H naught, X, Fe lower star, omega D, twisted by L to the P to the E. This one now maps to H naught, X, omega X twisted by D, twisted by L. This one maps to H naught <clears throat> X omega D twisted by L. And the point is just like before, this map here, one of my children was playing this, <laughs> need not um, surject. Right, because Kodaira vanishing fails on X, even if X is smooth in characteristic P, or it can fail anyways. But upstairs, this one is surjective. Because the next thing I'd map to would be an H1 of um, omega X of omega of omega X twisted by L to the P to the E. I need to map to this thing. And we said that was zero. So what you can do is you could factor this. This is going to map, I'll say this maps to M1. This thing has an image inside there, M2. Notice that these maps are not surjective here. I mean, or, 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 or the vertical maps in my diagram are not injective because they're maps between varieties. It's a finite map between varieties. It's not a birational map, like a blow up like we were taking before. But I can still take the image of this thing. And so if I have a map between these things, the map induced map between the images also surjects just immediately from the diagram. And so what we tend to do is we tend to say, okay, um, I'm, I might define something called S naught omega X or how about omega D twisted by L. And this will be M2 for E really big a special linear system inside H naught omega D twisted by L. And I'm going to have um, S naught um, sub D telling me something about some kind of adjoint version. X omega X D twisted by L. This will be M1. I go, I'm going to assume E is really, really big. And the point is I get a surjection from here to here. I've just proved I get a surjection from there to there. And it turns out that you can use this kind of surjectivity argument to still get a lot of the proofs you might have used for Kodaira vanishing. So let me say a little bit about that. Um, I'm not going to go through the proof here for time reasons, but if I have a projective d-dimensional variety over a field of characteristic P, X is a non-singular point, L is ample, so Chaudhry constant is bigger than D, then omega X tensored by L is globally generated by at X. In fact, it's even globally generated by this special linear 
system S naught omega x twisted by L. And I'm not going to go through this proof, but it's not difficult. You do the same thing with the blow up we did before, but then you just draw one more diagram with the, but, but then you apply the Frobenius on the blow up too. And you just push everything back down, taking these images like in this diagram. Okay. All right. And, you know, in fact, you know, there's been proofs of, um, you know, existence of flips by Hake and Shu, sort of using these kind of tricks and characteristic P for threefold, where at least P is bigger than five. And that was used, you know, other people, uh, Birkar, um, Birkar Waldron, Das, Om Prakash Das and Waldron and others sort of, you know, um, and Birkar again, have sort of managed to prove large parts of the minimal model program in, you know, characteristic P, um, dimension three, P bigger than five or P bigger than or equal to five in some cases, Haken Vitasek. Um, <clears throat> and, and this kind of lifting of sections of these special sections is sort of a, a main tool there. And actually even this kind of Sasadri constant trick, because maybe, maybe one of the sections you need to cook up comes from Sasadri constants. Um, and so, yeah, then you use the same kind of proof as above. Okay, so what about mixed characteristic, i.e., Oops, I don't want to use that color. What if X is over instead of a field, something like Z or ZP, or, you know, maybe some kind of just arbitrary excellent local ring, or, you know, some maybe excellent local ring. Remember, mixed characteristic means that maybe my ring has one characteristic, usually zero, but it has quotients that have different characteristics. So that's exactly like in ZP. ZP is a ring of characteristic zero, but if I go mod P, I get FP. And that's a ring of characteristic P. So that's why we say it is mixed characteristic. And unfortunately, um, let's see, we have no resolutions, except dim less than or equal to three. Um, actually, that's also true in characteristic P. Uh, we have no resolutions. We have no Kodaira vanishing. And unfortunately, we don't even have Frobenius. So what do you do? Okay, so we're going to use the same trick. But before I use that same trick, I need to explain something um, called local duality. So this is something that shows up in commutative algebra a lot, but it's maybe a little less common in um, sort of birational algebraic geometry. Okay, so I just want to start out by recalling Sayer duality. Sayer duality over a few. Okay, let's say X is Cohen Macaulay. So CM will mean Cohen Macaulay for me, not complex multiplication. Um, and I'm going to be projective over K. Field of characteristic zero, dim X equals D. You know, L is some kind of line bundle. And the classical Sayer duality says HIX. Omega x tensor L. If I dualize that, this is a finite dimensional k vector space, I can hum it into k. This is equal to h d minus i x L inverse. All right. This is something we're all familiar with, and it even appeared at the very beginning of my talk when I gave you two different ways of stating um, uh, could I revanish it? Okay, so what if, but, but if I'm not over a field, what do I do? Let's say I'm over a local ring, a ring R. Assuming the ring is nice enough, it has a dualizing complex, you know, you might just try to apply Grotendieck duality, which would say something like this. At least, you know, up to a little bit of work.
might say something along these lines. So Grotendieck duality says something like this, but this is already going to be pretty unsatisfactory. Like, like even if R is nice, even if R is like a Koa Macaulay or regular local ring, a nice dualizing complex, I can hum into R itself, I have to put an R hum here. So my dual, you know, before I would just like dualize these guys back and forth to each other, dualize these two vector spaces back and forth to each other by homing into K. Now I have to like take the derived hom into some thing and there definitely are gonna be Xs involved and it's just not gonna be a very pretty thing to work with. You know, you know, it would turn into some spectral sequence nightmare at best. Um, so I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna cross that out. Oh, we're crossing it out in rainbow. That's great. Um, okay, so instead of what I'm gonna do is let's say R is local, Noetherian, say it's a dualizing complex if you want. Actually, let's just say, forget all that. Let's say R is complete with maximal ideal. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna let E be the injective hole of the residue field. You thought you only had to deal with injective things when you're proving cohomology exists and you'd never have to touch them again. Maybe not quite so much here with the residue field. Okay. I can look at the functor hom over R into E. So this is going to be an exact functor because I'm homing into an injective module. But it turns out that this is even better. So it turns out that, um, you know, this induces an equivalence of categories. Of cats between Noetherian and Artinian R modules. Okay. And if I do it twice, I get the back the same thing, at least if I apply it to an Artinian or Noetherian R module. So double check, check, you know, is just the identity. At least you know, if I apply it to an Artinian or Noetherian thing, which is basically the same thing we have like over a field, right? If I have a finite dimensional vector space, I can double dualize it twice and I'm naturally isomorphic to whatever I started with. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and so when you have this functor, it turns out that HIX omega X tensored by L check uh, and I'll put the hypotheses here in a second. I have to, instead of taking ordinary cohomology, I have to take cohomology with supports. And this is probably abusive notation. So let me write this slightly better. D minus I pi inverse of the maximal ideal XL inverse. So I have to take cohomology with supports at the inverse image of the maximal ideal. Here maybe X is dimension D proper over spec R, and let's say X is Cohen Macaulay, so I don't have to deal with dualizing complexes for a second. So it looks just like classical serial duality. And you actually, you know, you don't have to deal with all these kind of spectral sequence business um, or, you know, derived categories. So in particular, if I'm trying to prove vanishing for this one, well, maybe I should instead be looking at vanishing for this, you know, this one instead. That seems reasonable. Okay, so what's our goal now? All right, I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. Again, X is proper. Um, <clears throat> over spec R, R is complete local. Complete local Noetherian. Um, then we probably want Z maybe mapping to X, call it pi, and maybe it would be very reasonable to ask that H I M Z pi upper star L inverse equals zero for all I less than D, which is the dimension of X. Maybe acts as some integral scheme proper over spec R. Okay. 
This might be a version of Kodaira vanishing that you might hope for, for instance. Okay, so you'd want to find a Y mapping to X with this property, and then maybe you could still run all the same arguments. Almost certainly want this surjective. Right? In characteristic zero, we took resolution of singularities, and we were able to use that to get some vanishing and special linear systems. In characteristic P, we just did Frobenius. That was fine. What about um, mixed characteristic? Okay, so the upshot is this exists. And I'm going to tell you what it is. X plus is basically the limit of all finite covers of X. Or in other words, maybe um, spec or OX plus basically is, um, you could essentially say the union of all the F lower star OY, F from Y to X finite. You know, you wanna be a little bit careful to avoid some set theoretic things. So like fix an algebraic closure of the residue field and take the integral closure of X in every finite extension um, of that, of my residue field. And okay, anyways, I'm just gonna take the union. Uh, this is called the absolute integral closure. Integral closure, closure of OX. Just looking at every basically possible finite cover. Okay, this is highly non -Notherian. Um, you, you know, like if I took a point on X, there's gonna be infinitely many points lying over it typically. Because, you know, if I took a point, well, maybe there's a branch cover over that point, turns into two points and each of those have branch covers too, which, you know, maybe turns it into end points. And so I'm gonna have tons of points on this thing. Um, <clears throat> but it's still a scheme. It's not no Ethereum. I'm not going to be able to talk about canonical modules on X plus, but it's still this big giant thing. And it's a theorem in characteristic P. This was proven 30-ish years ago by Hoxter and Hunicke. Um, more recently, it was proven by Bot and in mixed characteristic and um, Bot, Ma, Patek Falvi, myself, uh, Kevin Tucker, Joe Waldron, Jakob Vitasek, so that's us here. Um, you know, we generalized a little bit more general bases, but it's really um, Bargov's, uh, Bot's um, theorem. And it says, if I have an Ethereum excellent logo ring with residue field of characteristic P, and I have X to spec R proper, X integral, D-dimensional, then for any big and semi-ample line bundle L on X, if I pull that L inverse back to X plus, I am going to get all that cohomology vanishes for I less than D. Okay. So this looks just like Kodaira vanishing or Kalamata Fefeg vanishing, but I can't go, I can't pull back by Frobenius. I have to pull back by every possible finite cover. Okay. So we, we, we can just sort of black box this theorem, but the point is it actually has some nice um, applications. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I am going to look at HDM X L inverse. And just because X plus maps to X, I'm going to get this kind of map HDM X plus pull back of L inverse. I have a map between these two cohomology things. And what I can do is remember in Frobenius, we took the image of like the Frobenius map here. I'm just going to factor this through the image right here. And now I'm going to take duality, and this is matless duality again, this homing into the injective pole of the residue field of this whole diagram. And what I'm going to get is I'm going to get this image dual, and that's just going to be um, a subset of the dual of this one. And the dual of that one is H naught X omega X tensor L. So the image dual is going to live inside there. And I'm going to give it a name. 
B naught omega x twisted by L. By the way, there's some um, uh, uh, Takamatsu and Yoshikawa form something similar. They didn't quite use, um, <clears throat> they didn't use uh, sort of this local duality formalism. Instead, they look, took an infinite intersection of images and they constructed a similar thing, which they called T naught um, inside there under the assumption that R is complete, their definition basically agrees with ours. Um, and instead of looking at finite covers, they looked at alterations. So you wouldn't even want to take that limit, but they looked at like some kind of intersection of images from all alterations. Um, but under moderate hypotheses, they constructed this, the same special sections and they used it in some of the same ways that I'm going to talk about now. But let me just, um, yeah, let me just also say C uh, Takamatsu and Yoshikawa. And if people want at the end, I'm happy to give some additional explanation about the differences and you know some of the issues one runs into depending on which definition you're taking. Okay, but here is, but the point is with this kind of vanishing, we can get the same surjection we've been working with the entire time today. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose D prime a, you know, integral subscheme. Of X plus mapping to D. Roughly speaking, or even precisely speaking, this is a compatible choice of DY mapping to D for all finite covers f from y to x, roughly speaking. So it's just this kind of thing. Um, and after I make that fixed choice, we get the following diagram. <clears throat> oh, um, uh, sorry, before I get that diagram, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this um, h naught m x Ox minus d twisted by L inverse. This thing maps to H, oops, this HDM, not H not M. HDM x plus Ox plus minus d plus. Again, I'm assuming integrality hypotheses to make my life easier. Twisted by L inverse. I'm going to look at this image here. And I'm going to dualize the whole thing. And again, I'm going to set, set this image dual. I'm going to call it B naught D. Um, X omega X twisted by D tensor by L. And as before, this lives in H naught X omega X D twisted by L. Just by the duality business. Okay. And so what do you get out of this? Well, if you have a Noetherian complete local ring, residue field characteristic P, um, X to spec R is proper, X is integral, D dimensional, D is a, let's say, prime divisor on X. And for any big and semi ample line bundle, same proof as before, same proof as we've done several times, we get this B naught D to B naught surge X. Maybe I should even just draw the relevant diagram. I'm going to have H D minus one M DL inverse. And this maps to H D M X L inverse O X minus D. And this is the map. This is sort of shared dual to the map we've always been working with. This one right here need not surject. Or sorry, need not inject because we've dualized it. This is the thing that was dual to the thing we've been using search activity for the whole time. So this one need not inject. And we can do H D minus one M, you know, D plus pullback of L inverse, H D M, X plus, um, 
OX plus. I'm just going to abuse notation and treat it like it's a divisor. That's just the ideal sheaf of D plus, twisted by pullback of L inverse. The point is, this thing right here does inject by Bots Vanishing Theorem. And I have maps here. And so I can take their images, maybe M2 to M1. Because the bottom row injects, the map induced map between the images also injects. And so when I dualize it, it surjects. And that's the theorem. We've just proven it. Okay. All right. So it turns out that you can do, once you have this in place, you can do like the Sashadri constant thing. The proof's the same. You just have to get over your fear of X plus and maybe some local duality. Um, <clears throat> X is no theory and complete local ring, residue field characteristic P, X to spec R is proper. Let's say X is integral, D to, uh, integral D dimensional, L is an ample line bundle. Um, X and X is a non-singular closed point, And you assume the Sashadri constant is bigger than D, bigger than the dimension. Then omega X twisted by L is globally generated by these special sections at X. The proof's basically the same. The one other piece you need to actually know is that Okay, the exceptional divisor when you blow up that point is still going to be a projective space. So whenever I blow up a, um, a closed point in a regular local ring, I'm going to get the exceptional fiber being a, a projective space. And so you need to know E um, is sort of, well, it's actually sort of characteristic P now, but um, E, which is PD minus one over some characteristic P field, KX. Um, this thing um, is sort of, well, you need to know it satisfies um, <clears throat> OE to maybe OW, F lower star W, this thing splits for all um, F from W to E finite cover. This is a special fact about projective space. And once you have that, you get that B naught of E um, OE equals H naught of E OE. So this is the one other thing, one other fact you need to know to run the proof from the beginning of the talk. Okay, so this proof goes fine, goes through directly. Um, <clears throat> you get other things too. I'm gonna, maybe I'll highlight a couple of them. Uh, if I have a complete local, again, no theory in ring, um, X to spec, ooh, I left out a hypothesis on this one, I think, it's proper. Let's say this one's flat. I think I actually know how to generalize this, but it's not on the ARCA version yet. Um, with X non-singular in integral D-dimensional, L is a globally generated ample line bundle, then omega X twisted by relative dimension plus one is globally generated by B naught. So this is some kind of Fujita's conjecture, but I'm under this really strong hypothesis that L is a globally generated ample line bundle. So it's not just a standard Fujita conjecture type statement. Um, this proof really, the proof that's on the archive really mimics um, a proof of Karen Smith's in characteristic P, which showed the same thing. Okay, but also, we can also get in a minimal model program. Um, so I'll maybe just let you read this for a second. Um, under appropriate hypotheses, we can run a minimal model program with scaling, which terminates in a minimal model. Um, anyways, basically, large parts of the middle model program hold, and they basically hold in the same kind of generalities they hold in positive characteristic. We have to be three-dimensional, and we need our residue field characteristics to be bigger than or equal to seven. But the idea of this is really quite close to, um, you know, we follow ideas uh, with a number of improvements um, by of Hake and Shu, of Birkar, um, of Birkar Waldron. Das Waldron. 
and we used uh, Jakob Vitasek's mixed characteristic Kiel's theorem too. Um, but anyways, yeah, I think I'll, since I have, I, it's, it's supposed to be an hour long talk, right? I mean, we can sort of wrap up here and leave some time for questions. Yeah, that, but that's, I mean, I, I could say more things, but maybe I should just stop here and see if there's any questions. All right, let's give Carl a Zoom round of applause. All right, so do we have questions? And you can either unmute yourself and ask the question, or you can ask the question in the chat. Um, so let's see. I'm also going to see the participant. Um, or you can raise your hand and so forth. I can uh, get the conversation started. So you have this nice that vanishing theorem, and actually list quite a few, uh, a quite, a, quite a, quite a few applications. Is yeah. there a next application that you're working on? Is oh, there... I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe I should point out one of the sort of flaws of this theory as it stands oh. right now. Oh, actually, that would be quite unlikely. All right. So the big problem with this theory is, um, we don't really know. Although, you know, there's some. There's some ways we can get around this in some cases. But, okay, so this is even going back to some earlier work um, of myself and Ling Xuan Ma and also with um, um, Waldron and Vitasek and Kevin Tucker. You can form something like a multiplier ideal or test ideal. Let's, let's just work locally on a ring off. Right? Form a multiplier ideal test ideal like object you know um, maybe this lives inside or maybe I should shouldn't say X I should say R this is an ideal in R or you, you know even if X is like finite you know projective overall you can still or proper overall you can still define these kind of things um, but there's sort of a problem with them in that we don't really know, like even in the local case, does their formation commute with localization? So we don't know it's a sheaf, um, is really what I'm saying. Um, and this is actually probably the biggest obstruction here. Um, does formation commute with localization? So, so, so let me just like do some kind of really basic version of this. Just to see, you can see where the problem is. Let's ignore the boundary divisors, everything like this. You could like maybe define tau r, um, you know, make r pretty nice. You could take this, the intersection, this is more similar to, um, you know, Takamatsu Yoshikawa's sort of formations, but it, it agrees with it under certain hypotheses. You could take this to be the intersection of maybe omega, um, make it S over R to R, some kind of trace map, um, R inside S finite. So I'm looking at all sort of finite covers of spec R. I can look at these kind of images. I could form this infinite intersection. This infinite intersection doesn't stabilize in general at any particular point. And so like it doesn't equal the image from a single level. And so you don't, or, or you could also take alterations instead of finite covers. Um, and so what you run into unfortunately quite quickly um, is infinite intersections don't commute with localization. So there are some partial results in this direction that we have. Um, which hopefully some of them will be on the archive pretty soon. But, <clears throat> and some of them actually appeared in earlier work. Like on the locus where R is regular, this is what you expect it to be. You know, whatever this intersection of ideals is, it is agrees with R on the locus where R is regular. Um, that was earlier work of myself and Ling Xuan Ma and Kevin Tucker and Joe Walter and Jakob Vitasek. But, and I previous work of myself and Ling Xuan sort of handled that in some other cases. But yeah, infinite intersections don't commute with localization. So we don't have a good really local theory of these. 
Um, we, we can get around it in some cases. We can prove a bunch of results. And again, some of those will be on the archive pretty soon, um, even for like X over spec R. But this is the biggest open problem in this area right now, I think. Um, Awesome, thank you. Um, so any other questions that we have from the audience? So I, I wonder if you have something like server niching here uh, for say line bundle or more generally Fujita niching is something like that feasible? Yeah, I, mean, um, I mean, well, we're not gonna have a, yeah, I think there are some versions that kind of look like Fujita Vanishi. Um, they're not on the archive. I've, myself and some co-authors have written them down in some cases. I mean, but you know, already if you go back up here, I mean, I want to be like this kind of vanishing right here. I mean, this is already um, I mean, Fujita vanishing basically says if I have something ample enough, I get vanishing. But then I'm still going to be in the ample cone, typically, when you run like a Fujita vanishing type statement. Um, and so, oh, I see. You want to do it for other sheaves too, or like the twist by divisors? The twist by nef line bundles. Well, twi twist. But look, I mean, if I twist by a nef thing, um, it and I'm ample, I'm going to stay ample. So that's not really going to hurt anything. Um, if I'm big in semi ample and I twist, yeah, so we don't know whether I get vanishing if I'm big in nephew. So that's, so it's big in semi ample. We don't know about big in nephew. So if I'm right on the boundary of the nephew cone, I don't know if I get vanishing. But if I'm in ample and I twist by a little bit of nephew, I'm still going to be ample. So that's going to be okay. Um, what you could try doing is twisting by other sheaves besides, um, uh, you know, just line bundles or something. And, you know, I think there are some things that can be said, um, but it's, yeah, I mean, you know, in many cases, the other sheaves maybe come up from like covers of X anyway, so you can just sort of pass to some other, you know, pass to some other cover of X and like do the, run this thing on here. So it depends on what exactly you're trying to do. But yeah, I mean, we're already, pulling back quite far somehow. So I don't know, um, but we really need semi-ample in this hypothesis here. We don't know how to do this with NEP. We don't know this in characteristic P with NEP either instead of semi -ample. So that's open as well. All right, any other questions for Carl or like a quick question? Maybe we'll start wrapping up. Thank you. All right, actually, why don't we end there? Um, because I think we're getting, you know, where people have other, <laughs> we're getting to the end of the hour. So we'll give Carl another round of applause. Thank you, Zoom round of applause. You're imagining a group of three people clapping. Uh, and then um, it was nice to see you all. And um, yeah, um, maybe Carl, can you stick around for one or two minutes in case someone has a question that they can ask as people are leaving? All right, thanks. And then Carl, if, uh, can can you hit the stop recording button or maybe? Yes. Okay, thanks for your nice lecture. Do you want to start cloud recording?